Good afternoon, Your Honors. This is case number IT-04-84T, the prosecutor versus Ramush Haradnai et al. Thank you, Mr. Edgesa. I note that the prosecution is present, Mr. Ray, lead counsel, assisted by the other members of the team. I see that Mr. Hardina is present, Mr. Emerson there as lead counsel, assisted by members of his team. I see Mr. Ballet to be present, represented by Mr. Guy Smith, and assisted by members of his team. And finally, Mr. Bahimai being present, assisted by Mr. Harvey and members of that defense team. <clears throat> the chamber is sitting today to deliver its judgment in the case of the prosecutor versus Ramesh Haradinai, Idris Balai, and Lahi Brahimai. For the purposes of this hearing, the chamber will briefly summarize its findings. We emphasize that this is a summary only and that the authoritative account of the Chamber's findings is to be found in the written judgment which will be made available at the end of this session. This case concerns crimes allegedly committed between the 1st of March and the 30th of September 1998 in the Dugajin area of Kosovo. This is an area in western Kosovo which encompasses the municipalities of Pech, Dechani, Dakovica, and parts of the municipalities of Istok and Klina. It is alleged that during this period, the Uchika, also known as Kosovo Liberation Army, and which we will refer to as the KLA, persecuted and murdered Serb and Kosovo Roma civilians, as well as Kosovo Albanian civilians perceived to be collaborating with Serbian forces in order to consolidate total control of the Dugatini area. Ramush Haradinaj, <coughs> Idris Balai, and Lahi Brahimai stood trial as alleged participants in a joint criminal enterprise aiming to consolidate total KLA control over the Dugatine area by the unlawful removal and mistreatment of the aforementioned civilian groups. The prosecution alleges that from at least the 1st of March 1998 until mid-June 1998, Ramush Haradinaj was a de facto KLA commander in the Dukatine area, and that from mid-June he became a de jure commander. The prosecution alleges that Idris Balai was the commander of a unit within the KLA known as the Black Eagles which operated throughout the Dukajin area. According to the indictment, as commander of the Black Eagles, Idris Balai was directly subordinate to Ramush Haradinaj. Finally, the prosecution alleges that Lahi Brahimai <coughs> was a member of the KLA general staff stationed at the headquarters in Jablanica in Dakovica municipality. According to the indictment, he was also deputy commander in the Dukajin area for a short period. <laughs> the prosecution alleges that Lahi Brahimai was subordinate to and worked closely with Ramush Haradinaj. Each of the three accused was also charged in the alternative with having committed, planned, instigated, ordered, or aided and abetted several of the crimes alleged in the indictment. <coughs> Before summarizing its findings, the Chamber would like to address a few matters 
related to the proceedings in the present case. During the trial, the Chamber received evidence from almost a hundred witnesses. Nevertheless, the Chamber encountered significant difficulties in securing the testimony of a large number of these witnesses. Many cited fear as a prominent reason for not wishing to appear before the Chamber to give evidence. In this regard, the Chamber gained a strong impression that the trial was being held in an atmosphere where witnesses felt unsafe due to a number of factors set out in the judgment. The parties furthermore agreed that an unstable security situation existed in Kosovo that was particularly unfavorable to witnesses. As a reflection of the difficulties encountered in obtaining a testimony, 34 witnesses were granted certain protective measures. In addition, 18 subpoenas to testify were issued for witnesses who continued to refuse to testify despite the possibility of protective measures. Four subpoenas issued by the Chamber were not complied with. In one of these cases, the witness concerned eventually agreed to testify via video conference link. For two others, the Chamber confirmed indictments for contempt of the Tribunal against the witnesses concerned. These witnesses were arrested and transferred to The Hague. They both decided to testify before the initial appearance in their contempt cases. Following their testimonies, the indictments were withdrawn. In relation to the fourth witness who defied a subpoena, Nasser Lika, the Chamber undertook various measures in order to obtain his testimony, including extending the time allotted for the prosecution to present its case. The witness never testified. Three prosecution subpoena requests were denied by the Chamber. In one case, the denied request concerned a witness who was experiencing extreme emotional distress about testifying before the Tribunal. The Victims and Witness Section of the Tribunal warned the prosecution that there were risks in using this person as a witness unless a threat assessment and other assessments were made. The prosecution did not subsequently initiate any such assessments. Under those circumstances, the Chamber found it imprudent to compel the witness's testimony. Two witnesses came to the Tribunal without being subpoenaed, only to refuse to testify when invited to do so. One of these witnesses, Shevkat Kabashi, confirmed a few personal details, after which he refused to answer any questions on the substance of the case. Consequently, the Chamber issued an order in the of indictment for contempt of the Tribunal. However, before his trial was due to start, Kabashi left the Netherlands and returned to his place of residence in the United States. <coughs> the Chamber considered and undertook various steps to obtain his evidence. The contempt case against Shevkat Kabashi is still pending his arrest and transfer to The Hague. 